All right, just a quick video showing some more scriptures that prove the power of contrary choice. The God-centered, God-glorifying doctrine of free will, which is the power of contrary choice, is a consistent theme throughout the Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, hundreds upon hundreds of scriptures. And these right here are just a few uh, out of the hundreds of verses I could cite. So let's get right into the Word of God, and not Calvinistic eisegesis, but just reading the Word of God as it stands. Because Calvinism... Again, it's a Gnostic heresy, and it is based upon inserting your own theology into the text. Instead of just letting the scripture speak for itself, they're, telling, they're inserting their doctrine, they're reading it into the text when it's not there. Free will is a consistent theme throughout the word of God. Let's get right into the scriptures. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16 and 20. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings. From before mine eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So you see, if ye, if ye, it's conditional. There's two contrary choices given, and they're told to choose. If ye. And by the way, it's God-centered because God is the one who gives the choices. God sets the standard, and God will hold you accountable for the choices you make. You're going to see that as a consistent theme. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 6. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt uh, hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt the, shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy uh, uh, kind and flocks of thy sheep. Not good at reading on the computer, do apologize. Blessed uh, shall be thy basket and thy, thy, and, sorry, and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Okay, now you have blessings for obedience, and you see the condition, if thou, if thou. Now here you have the curses for disobedience. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 down to verse 20. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not, hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that, the, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed uh, shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall thy basket and thy cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land and the increase of thy uh, kind and flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. And the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, rebuke, sorry, and rebuke, and, and all that thou settest thine hand unto, uh, sorry, unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. You notice too, too by the way, it's their own doing, it's their own work. If thou, and, and he's holding them accountable for the choices they're making. If thou, and then you see the results of refusing to be, obey the voice of the Lord. Likewise, the results of if they chose to obey the voice of the Lord. More scriptures on the matter. Deuteronomy 30, verse 1 to 3. And it shall come to pass uh, when all these things are come upon thee, and a blessing and the curse, sorry, and the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call uh, them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and thou shalt return to the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Uh, then, th sorry, that then. The Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and will have and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. See again, see again, if thou, you know, and here's the, here's the really powerful scripture on the matter. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 down to verse 20. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, whether thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou goest, whether thou passest over Georgia, Jordan, 
uh, to go to possess it. I, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I've set before you life and death, cursing and blessing. Therefore, choose life, that thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. Uh, for he is sorry, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land, which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So you see them, he's setting there, or so you see right there, he's setting before them two alternative choices, a blessing and a cursing. He's admonishing them to choose life, but you see, ultimately it's up to them. That's the power of contrary choice, the God-centered doctrine of free will and the power of contrary choice. Deuteronomy 11, verse 26 down to verse 28. Behold, I have set before you, before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. So you see, accountability, and it goes right hand in hand with free will. Calvinists want to have it both ways where they'll say that, oh, there's no free will, but it doesn't remove your personal accountability. That's an oxymoron. It shows the, the Calvinistic cognitive dissonance. Your choice, your personal accountability is a result of your free will. No free will means no personal accountability. This is what Calvinists are unable to handle, you know, because they want to have it both ways. If you choose to object, or sorry, I reject the Lord, you know, not obey, then he, li he lists the curses you know, for Israel, you know, when he told Israel that. And likewise, in the New Testament, if you choose to reject the gospel, you'll be rightly judged for that. But if God predestines you to do so, ultimately it's actually God's fault for you for you uh, rejecting the gospel. This is what Calvinists are unable to deal with, the logical conclusions. If you have no free will, then all sin is ultimately God's fault. God is the author of sin, you know, and they have to cover it up and say, well, it doesn't remove your personal accountability, but, you know, not in such a way that makes them the author of sin, like the Westminster Confession of Faith, because they can't deal with that logical conclusion. If you have no free will to choose between good and evil, and God predestines, you know, you have a free will that's, that's consistent with your nature, you know, so you can only choose evil, ultimately your sin is God's fault, because you had no ability to choose otherwise. That's the logical conclusion. The God of Calvinism is a God of sin a worker of iniquity who is essentially the ultimate cause of your sin. Plan. And by the way, just because God can intervene and God can incorporate the evil intentions of men does not mean he's unchangeably, irresistibly causing that from eternity to happen, or that he causes all sin. That's another thing Calvinists will try to do. So anyway, don't be deceived by the Gnostic, you know, Calvinist heresy, the man-centered doctrine of theistic determinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.